What's going on guys? It's the bitter one back with another beer review. I'm out here in the guest bedroom. Um about to do some video gaming late at night. Uh I'm in the mood for a beer, uh, but it's a beer I haven't reviewed yet. Uh I'm kind of particular about not reviewing a beer I haven't reviewed yet. Uh and I want to drink this beer while I'm video gaming and all that kind of stuff. So so here we are. Uh, and tonight I got Trim Tab's Garden of Fire. Uh, it's another IPA uh, from Trim Tab's Light Visions Collection. Sorry, it, it's it's not midnight, uh, but it's definitely late for the beard. And uh, had to think on that one. Um, it's a hazy. Uh, Double dry hopped, uh, double IPA. So there's a there's gonna be a lot of resin in here from that double dry hopping, um, and it it could be bitter, it may not be bitter. Uh, I've I've learned over the past year uh, as I've tried to really acquire a taste for IPAs and bitterness in beer that uh, the IBU scale and things like double, triple, quadruple in the IPA, IPA realm uh, don't always attribute to uh, bitterness factor. Uh, you, I've had double IPAs that uh, I thought were pretty sweet. Uh, especially those milkshake IPAs. Uh, I had Arrogant Bastard. It's a regular ale but it just so happens to be a 100 IBU beer. Uh, and it, it's pretty bitter. I wouldn't say for 100 IBUs it felt like I was drinking 100 IBUs, but uh, it was still pretty bitter. And it's not even an IPA, so there you go. Um, if you haven't watched any of my other Trim Tab videos or you're fairly new to the channel, Trim Tab is out of Birmingham, Alabama. I think they're the premier IPA brewery in the state. Uh, I just don't, I, you know, there's other good IPAs out there, uh, Monkey Knot from Straight to Ale, uh, Snake Handler from Good People tends to be a, uh, a celebrated and storied IPA in the state, and then, you'll have to excuse me for you folks south of Birmingham, I, I don't know south of Alabama very well, but, you know, I'm sure Serta or, um, uh, I don't know, somebody in South Alabama has got to have a wonderful IPA as well. Uh, but for me, I just think Trim Tab uh, and what they're doing with IPA in the state of Alabama is just phenomenal. Uh, they're using Huell, H-U-E-L-L, Huell, Melon, Laurel, and Zithos hops. So I'm not sure I've ever had these hops. I, I, I really get excited when I try a new variety of hops I've never uh, had before um, it is 8% uh, alcohol so uh, not terribly sessionable if you're trying to kick a few of these back you know and and the light visions collection if you don't get it on tap I'm pretty sure it only comes in uh, these these one pint cans uh, and they're they're either in single or four pack uh, you just have to get kind of lucky on singles unless you're near a store that will allow you to break up singles uh, out of a pack uh, and then you know before we get into the pour or anything I do like to read off the back of these cans uh, this whole series is kind of artsy uh, it kind of uh, goes more into the artisan and craftsman side of craft brewery so you know and then they put quotes um, on here on the back of these cans and uh, excuse me I bumped that uh, bump something on my desk uh, so, so if you just indulge me for a second, or you can fast forward to the pour, uh, just do so as you wish. But it says, uh, do not let your fire go out. Do not let the hero in your sour soul perish. Check your road and the nature of your battle. The world you desired can be won. It exists. It is real. It is possible. It is yours. And that is from Ayn Rand. A-Y-N Rand. Pretty inspirational quote there I would like to say uh, before I pour this you'll see 50533 uh, on their on their logo and 
I'm bringing it up because I'm pretty curious as to what that means. So if anybody sees this video and you know what that means, uh, please put it in the comments. So there's the pour. I got a nice one inch thick head, pretty textbook pour here. Pretty proud of myself there. Probably pour of the year. Um, pretty, pretty hazy, pretty murky, what they were wanting, you know. Um, it, it highlights to a pale golden straw around uh, the edge of the glass, but it's really a deep, uh, it's really just a, a really solid gold color here. Uh, coming off the blue of the background of my um, computer, it, uh, it appears green, but it is indeed not green. Excellent head retention. Look at that. I mean, that would rival like Belgian ales there. And that's one of my favorite things about the Belgian ales is just how their head retains so well, even throughout the beer. Because of even uh, American beers that retain pretty well, I find the head still dissipates as I'm drinking the beer. And the Belgians just seem to stay. Uh, I had a Belgian double within a month or so ago, and, and the head was just there to the finish. And even as I took the last sip, it laced all over the glass. It, it was pretty cool. Uh, I just wonder what makes uh, certain beers retain so well and other beers not. Hoppy aroma for sure. A little bit of dank, resinous. Uh, definitely some pine and earthiness going on in here. Maybe a touch of grapefruit. Uh, not terribly citrusy. And yeah, I'm not picking up malt or, uh, I don't know what else would, uh, they put in here. I didn't look up, uh, much on the beer. you have to excuse me on that. So I don't know if there's any fruits in here or anything. I don't know the malt varieties. I'm just kind of shooting from the hip, uh, with this one. Yeah, uh, pleasant nose. I was kind of expecting this with it being double dry hopped. It, it, it's resinous, pine, earth. Um, not, it doesn't smell terribly bitter, and then maybe a touch of grapefruit, just a touch of, of tartness in there. Uh, let's dig into this thing. It's, uh, surprisingly sweet, not, not cloyingly sweet. This isn't a dessert beer, I, I wouldn't say. But it's really sweet uh, for it to be a double dry hopped, double hazy IPA. Um, let's see. I don't think there's a. I don't think there's a can date on here. I will. I do want to say. I will preface first, this sat on the singles rack for however long, which uh, the Light Visage collection is fairly new, so this didn't sit on the shelf for, for months and months at a time, but it sat on the singles rack for a little bit at uh, my local shop, and they don't put anything in a refrigerator, well, let me, let me backtrack, they do put singles and they do put packs in um, refrigerator, but they do have a singles rack that is room temp for things that aren't really selling well, I I, I think. Um, and so that's where I picked this up. Uh, and I'm just wondering if that's why it's a lot more sweet and not as uh, dank as I was expecting. It's, it's grassy, for sure, a little bit of earth, um, but there's, it's, it's almost like a sugary, is there lactose in here? There's a really, um, there's a really uh, creamy mouth, uh, there's a creamy mouthfeel on this. 
um, pleasant to, to drink. Um, and the hops, I don't want to say they they're in the foreground. They don't they don't play accent to that the malty sweetness going on in here, but they're just not as dank as I was hoping. And I don't know if that has to do with anything, you know, the the lupulin threshold or any of that. I don't I don't drink uh, nothing but IPAs, so I don't feel like I've um, I don't feel like I'm hop tolerant uh, per se. I'm I'm more acquired to hops for sure nowadays, but um, it's just kind of it's just kind of interesting, uh, maybe how the age has played on these hops, but they're they're definitely not uh, pungent. One more time. Yeah, again, grassy, more grassy than pine, because it's not as uh, it's not as sharp as pine is. Um, a little bit of earth in there. Um, and then there's there's like uh, some malty sweetness in here. It's almost at least at least for me, I could be wrong, but I feel like there's like a lactosey sugary thing going on in here. It's, it's surprisingly sweet, but not a candy sweet uh, type of sweetness. It feels it feels more natural, um, more based on the 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 grains they may have used. Um, I should have looked up the malt bill. That would have been interesting to see. Um, I think there's some floralness going on in here. I think there's a touch of flour going on in here. And not, not baking flour. Yeah, I think there's... Um, I think there's a beautiful floral presence uh, in these hops. Um, overall, I really like it. Um, but for some reason or another, this is now... I've had sing Citrus Singularity. I had that on tap at the brewery. Fantastic IPA. Um, I've reviewed Southern Sphere. Which, uh, I have my can collection here somewhere. Okay, I can't... I hope somebody didn't throw it away. Oh, well. I have a can collection in here somewhere. Uh, I was going to show you show you guys the cans. Uh, but I've had sing Citrus Singularity, again, repeating myself. Um, reviewed Southern Sphere, that'll be coming up in a couple of weeks when we're done with stout month um and then i've had cloud architecture which i'm saving my last can since that was i picked up that four pack it was the last four pack in my um my local shop and they said they bought up everything they made in their last run of cloud architecture so i i would like to say i might have the last can of cloud architecture in the state um maybe in existence uh in my refrigerator uh so it's gonna be bittersweet to let go of cloud architecture but i have had that it's it's that last cans pending review um and now this gardens of fire um and they're all just surprisingly tame as far as the bitterness goes. Um, I'm not really a bitter guy. Uh, if you watch the channel and you've seen some of my more bitter uh, stout reviews that I've uploaded, um, bitterness is a big turnoff for me. Um, but these have been surprisingly tame and sweet and enjoyable. Um, I, as far as recommendations, 
Um, with this being a double dry hopped, double IPA, I can't recommend this to a day one beer drinker. Um, my palate is definitely going to be a lot different than your palate if you're just getting into craft beer or you're just getting into IPAs. So maybe Garden of Fire isn't for you if you're trying to uh, discover the style of IPA. However, if you like IPAs, you might not find this uh, as bitter as you'd like. But if you're more of a dessert pastry IPA kind of person, I think you would enjoy this Light Visions collection from uh, Trim Tab as much as I have. Uh, I think Trim Tab is doing wonderful things with IPA. I can't, I've said it all video and I can't say it enough. Um, as far as the rating goes, I think I'm going to put it at a 4 out of a 5. I think it's just right on par with the rest of the collection. Um, they all seem to have the same uh, bitterness to sweetness ratio. Um, I think so far Gardens of Fire is my favorite of the collection. Um, I like the can the most. Um, I like that there's a touch of grapefruit in here. I like there's the, I, I'm, I've really been turned on to floral a uh, character in hops because when it's done right it is just so tasty and, and so aromatic it's almost like perfume for your beer it is basically perfume for your beer the, the, the more floral uh, varieties of hops so yeah four out, you know four out of the five um, that's about all I got trim tab brewing garden of fire Double dry hopped, double IPA. Till next time, guys. Cheers.